Hey Bass Resource fans, Glenn May here. And a little while ago, we asked you to send in the questions you would ask Joe Swindle if you had a chance to sit down with him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, the Gene Man was up to the task, and he even invited us out for a day on the water while he practiced for yet another Bassmaster Classic appearance. Here now are the uncensored answers to the questions you asked Gerald Swindle. Now, Gerald, there are uh, several guys on the forum who uh, want to know how you got your start and, and uh, how did you get from there to, to where you are today? Well, I mean, getting my start was, was kind of a gift from my dad. We fished growing up. That's all we done as hobbies. We either hunted or fished. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, so it wasn't a lot of vacations. Matter of fact, none to Disney. But as a family, we just kind of stayed outdoors. And I don't know, he fished tournaments growing up. And I can remember him fishing the, some of the very first BASS tournaments. So kind of fishing was in my blood early, either with my granddad or him. And, and after I got out of school, I was framing houses and working. Started winning a little money fishing these little night tournaments, little Tuesday nighters and Thursday nighters. And I knew right then if I could make money with a rod and reel, I was gonna put that hammer down. And that's just about how the whole thing developed. It wasn't a big master plan. It was just an eye-opening experience that I actually fished a little five-hour tournament and got paid for it. So I thought, well, if you can do it once, you can do it again. And, you know, it took several years. It, that wasn't something that come come easy, you know. I, I took a lot of beatings. I mean, we, we did win a little money, but man, locally I fished and fished and fished for years and then it got to where, you know, on my home lake, Smith Lake and Logan and Lay and all them lakes, I got really competitive and on the local level I won a lot. As much as you can win locally, you know, staying in the money and I made that next step to regional. Then when I left there I made the step into the open, man, it was just a slow ladder, but the key is, you know, if, you, if you're not a strong force locally, then you, you, it's going to be hard to make it on the top level. You need to be, you need to be really, really catching them locally to make that next step to regional. And then you need to be, need to be holding your own regionally before you make the step into the, to the big leagues. You know, and once I got qualified for the tour, there was still a lot of bumps in the road, and it was an uphill battle, but we made it. What was the defining moment where you decided that? This, this is it, I'm gonna be a pro angler. Uh, you know, I think, I think I knew growing up, once I started winning money, I wanted to be a pro, but the defining moment in my whole career when I knew that I could do it and stay out here is when I won uh, the Beaver Lake the FLW series. The very first FLW they ever had that paid 150,000, I won it on Beaver Lake. And, you know, that was the, the turning point where I knew Financially, then I had enough money to stay out here, and uh, the sponsors started really showing up then. And without a doubt, I knew from that day on, even driving back that 10 hour drive home, I knew this is where I'd spend the rest of my life was in the front of a boat. So, Bass Fishing Magician writes Who do you think is the best way, or what do you think is the best way for young anglers to reach their ultimate goal in becoming a pro? Uh, you know, for a young angler to become a pro, there's a couple of simple steps. It's uh, now the, this day and time, it's different. Uh, the first biggest step for a young guy, you got to complete college. You got you got to at least do two years, get a business, study some marketing, because there's so much more involved in fishing than just catching them. You're selling yourself constantly. So with a little college education that that'll prepare you for the business world, uh, the number game. Uh, what contracts can be, so that's your first step. And then the second step is time on the water, time on the water. You gotta, you gotta sacrifice everything else you love to do, concerts or the beach, all that comes second. On the water is number one, so uh, at least two years in the college and then a lot of time on the water. And that's the best way I know to get to be you know, in the top level. Well, well Big Bass Mo says, you know, he asks, at, at what point can you say that you, you're competitive enough at your current level and maybe think about the next step up? Well, at what, what, what point do you think you should move on? I think that's an easy one to answer. Everyone wants to know when they should move on. If you're fishing locally and you're in the top five 85% of the time, 90% of the time, local tournaments, if you're in the top five, 
you're ready for the next step. If you're not, if you're, if you're just winging around outside the money, you don't need to make that step because there's better competition up in front of you until you're, <clears throat> you're extremely strong locally and, and you can stay in the money most, almost all the time. You don't need to make that step. The, uh, there's a guy on a forum named B Dub, and he asks, if you were starting all over again, never having fished a tournament in your life, where would you begin? Uh, if I had to start all over again, never have fished a tournament in my life, uh, I guess the first thing to do and the only way to get started then you'd have to join a club. You'd need to join a bass club because you got so much to learn by never fishing a tournament. Joining a club is going to put you surrounded by guys that you can learn from and then you just have to be the human sponge. Everything in the club you have to soak it up. So joining a club, baby, that's an easy one. <laughs> well, Balsa Bader, don't you love the names of these some of these yeah. guys? <laughs> Does anybody use their real name? Uh, Balsa Bader. He wants to know about your, your back. He, he knows you've had several back injuries. A lot, of pe a lot of people have asked about this, your back surgeries. But he asks, uh, he wants to know how much you attribute your back injuries to the pounding you've taken in a bass boat and what steps you're taking to protect your back while fishing and driving in a boat in big water. It's weird, you know. I, I am one of the few guys out here at my age that's had five back surgeries and still live a very fruitful and wild life you know I don't do there's not much I don't do right now if I want to see you know I deer hunt and I hang tree stands and I drag deer I live a 100% active life even though I've been opened up five times but did I get hurt in a boat no did riding in a boat contribute to them no you know the first two were work related the next one I was swinging a golf club herniated two discs at the same time <laughs> so you know very few times has it been contributed to being in the boat. Once you start having back problems, it's naturally that it starts degenerating. So, you know, it's just something that happens. But you know, there's keys to getting to getting back on your feet. The biggest thing is you gotta want to. So many people get a back injury and want to lay down and quit and say, oh, you know, all this, that dude, that's that's a bunch of bull crap. You know, if you want something bad enough, you'll get up and fight again. So I just wasn't the guy that let the doctor tell me. I mean, and they made them same speeches. You shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. But, you know, you shouldn't do a lot of stuff. You shouldn't date ugly women, but people do it. So I wasn't the guy that listened to the doctor. I, I have dreams and aspirations and I wasn't gonna let an injury stop that. And then I started making progress and knowing how to keep myself stronger to prevent it. You know, when I'm home, at least three to five days a week, I'm in the gym at 6 a.m., you know, I'm doing just pull up after pull up after pull up, a couple hundred crunches, push ups. I mean, I'm steadily in the gym. I run about two and a half, three miles a day. I do stadiums and wind sprints. I'm constantly pushing my body to be stronger and to stay healthy because the key to, key to keeping your back healthy is your abs. And most people won't do that. That's why you don't see a seat up here. I don't want any bad body posture. I don't wear any kind of brace. I want my abs to be strong as I can get them at all times. That's just a few of the ways that, that I do it, but you know, living healthy, staying in the gym, but I, I can't tell you that I don't have any pain. You know, I have days where, man, I'm miserable. You know, riding in the boats, it can be, it can be a brutal, brutal rough ride. And then there's, there's things you have to do. I mean, uh, I've got a company that's out of the area I live in called TPS. And it's a company called Total Pain Solution, and they make transdermal medicine. So what it is, is like a high, high anti-inflammatory, but you don't take it orally. I can rub it in the areas that I'm, I'm hurting, which enables me during the day, if I have really sore back problems, to take the cream out, I can rub it in that area. You'll be surprised, it's so much less evasive on my stomach when we don't eat, so there's ways to do it, man. Look into that, if you guys are hurting, Look into a company like TPS that makes that makes creams, makes steroid creams, makes anti-inflammatories. Help keep that pain down where you can get yourself in shape. Once you get in shape, it's a lot easier to stay there. Well, I guess as a follow-up, uh, AJ wants to know if uh, reaching the age, age of 40, if that's changed your the way you fish tournaments. Well, it's kind of weird. When I turned 40, I had made a goal when I was about six or seven months before I turned 40, I told my wife I was gonna have a six pack. 
when I turned 40 and I really started training just for that, to, to try to turn 40 and I can, I got it really close. Uh, my shoulders started bothering me. Both of my shoulders have been rebuilt. Both of them have been operated on. And one of my shoulders started bothering me so I had to quit pushing so much weight. I did more cardio, but I didn't have a six pack when I turned 40, but I did have a four pack. And I was probably in the best shape of my life when I turned 40. So it really hasn't affected nothing. I feel, I feel like I'm 30 years old. That hadn't changed anything.